Now let's see how it allows us to establish client-server communication. Just like in the previous lesson when we were using hook handle hot update to implement hot module replacement feature for our plugin. And in here we were using WebSocket object to send events to the client. And then we also had a chance to specify which data exactly should be sent along with this event. And in our client script we have registered listener for this event, accepted the data received from the server, and then we were able to do anything we want with this data to implement hot module replacement. But besides using this hook handle hot update, which will be called only when any module that we are importing in JavaScript files will be changed. We can use another hook which allows us to configure the server, and this hook is called configure server, which accepts a server instance as the first parameter. And by using this server object, we can also access WebSocket connection. So just like previously, we can set up a listener for all kinds of events. For example, there is a default event called connection, which will be fired whenever our WebSocket connection will be established. So we can try listening for this event in here, and once we establish WebSocket connection, let's send an event to the client with the name connected. And as a payload we can send simple message. Connection established. And now to be able to listen for this event from the client code, we have to register a listener by using object hot. So here we also call the method called on, and as a first parameter we have to specify event name, which we'll be listening for, and as a second parameter we specify the closure, which will be our event handler. So this closure is going to receive the payload sent from the server along with this event. And now let's see what will be printed in a console. I'm going to switch over to the browser. And as we can see in here we have that message sent from the server once WebSocket connection was established. And this way we can exchange messages between server and the client. For example, let's fire another event as a response to the server with the name ping and the payload, which will also be a simple message, hello server. And now going back to our plugin implementation, inside of this configure server hook, let's register another listener for the pin event, and specify an event handler. This time, event handler is going to receive two parameters, first of which will be the payload sent from the client, and the second parameter will be the client itself. In other words, the object that represents the connection. And inside of this closure we will be able to use this object to send events to the client. So as a response let's send event with the name Pong and the message hello client. And now one more time let's switch over to our client script and register a listener for this event Pong by using that same object hot. As an event handler let's specify the closure, which will receive the payload as the first argument, and print this payload in a console. So now in the browser console we can see two messages. The first one was printed once WebSocket connection was established, because previously on the server side in our plugin implementation code we have registered listener for the connection event, and as soon as WebSocket connection was established, we send the event called connected to the server with the message connection established, and then client has received this event and printed that message in a console. And now to reply back to the server, client sent another event with the name ping and the message hello server. On the server side we have registered a listener for the event ping and also printed the message which will come from the client in the server console. So now if we're going to take a look on the server console, we're going to see here that message received from the client hello server. And finally, besides printing this message in a console, we're also firing another event Pong to the client with the message hello client. And in our client script, we're basically listening for this event and printing received message in the browser console. And which is why we're seeing in here a second log that says hello client received from the server. And by the way, all those listeners and events which we have used in here this call will be executed only if an object hot will be available, because we have wrapped everything in the if conditional. And the thing is that this object hot will be available only during development. So if we are going to build this project for production by running 
npm run build. This object hold will not be available. So all this code will be basically removed from the production bundle by using tree shaking. So at the end let's just make sure that this is the case. I'm going to print out simple message in here just to see that this code will be executed. And indeed we're seeing that log hot in the browser console along with other logs. Because currently I'm running development server, but once I'm going to switch over to the console and run the command to build this project for production, and then run production build in the browser by executing npm run preview. Sure enough, I'm not going to see any logs whatsoever. This is because that conditional block which we're checking if hot object is present has not been executed since hot object is not available in the production build. So this is how we can exchange messages between our plugins and the client code by using WebSocket connection provided by Vite.